No city of today will serve as the guide for the city of tomorrow. Epcot will be a planned environment, demonstrating to the world what American communities can accomplish through proper control of planning and design. There was a time when the world came together for an event that inspired all who witnessed it, and they called it the World's Fair. Thanks for kind of giving me the lowdown on Epcot. I didn't realize that it was supposed to be this futuristic city that they were going to make. Absolutely. So back in the day, Walt Disney dreamed a big dream after seeing a lot of the different world fairs. They were actually involved in the world fairs for a bit, but they decided to create this experimental community of tomorrow, which was supposed to be a real city that was going to show the world a better way to do living. It was kind of cool, too, because I'll be honest, I was not expecting those grand of ideas from, you know, even just then. Some of those ideas, I would even say, currently are, you know, revolutionary, so to speak. They, they really did dream quite big. Absolutely. And the big question is, why haven't we continued to dream big? And why haven't we seen any of these big ideas really come to fruition? What's kind of interesting about this to me is that it seems like those big dreams are kind of what would solve our current problems. I agree. And despite not having cell phones and the big computers, they were figuring out how we could live a better life back then, today. The question is, why haven't we embraced them? And I think, and we've talked a lot about this, the problem comes from these laws and regulations stifling innovation. We've got these innovators out there. We've got great ideas out there. Some people working their butts off to bring this stuff to market. And then when they get there, red tape, red tape <laughs> stops them. And we have all these politicians and environmentalists telling us every day just how bad it is. They want to take our steak away from us. No one's taking my steak away right? from me. Please, <laughs> not eating bugs ever. In light of this environment, saving the environment. And I'm all for saving the environment. And I think, as we'll talk about in a few minutes, there's some big people coming out and saying, we must do something. And we've had these ideas, but Government, politicians, red tape has to get out of the way for this to move forward. I mean, we kind of have a solution right up there. Why aren't we using it? If you only need about 100 miles by 100 miles of solar panels to power the entire United States. It's a great question. And John and I are going to be asking a lot of these great questions and more as time goes on. Both John and I have officially left teaching and 3 and B as well our main business. So we would really appreciate you hitting that like and subscribe button and supporting us on our journey. Please. I'm desperate. Just a little. <laughs> a couple weeks ago, I was reading J.P. Morgan Chase's annual report written by their cool CEO, Jamie Dimon. And I was kind of taken back by his suggestion that climate change may be so bad that governments may need to use eminent domain, that's the taking of private property, to put up solar farms and wind farms to deal with climate change. And the little light bulb went off in my head and said, if Jamie Dimon is that concerned about climate change that we're taking people's property, we may have something here to worry about. Yeah, that's kind of interesting. From all I've heard about Jamie is that he's, you know, really into industry, business, entrepreneurship. But I've, I've never really heard any of the top people being like, oh, maybe we need to do something incredibly drastic, especially because he's most likely benefiting from it. I agree, and Jamie Dimon is someone I do follow, and I've watched him for a long time, and he is. He's a self-proclaimed American patriot. He loves free enterprise capitalism. I think business can be a force for good, but I, I don't represent the government, but you know, everyone knows I'm an American patriot, so I'm sitting here in China, but I'm a red-blooded, full-throated, free enterprise capitalist. And for him to suggest taking private property to deal with climate change, this must be an issue. And secondly, if he's talking about it this way, he's starting to take climate change into his business model. He's thinking, how is climate change going to affect my bottom line? And if he's thinking this, we all should be thinking this, and we need to start addressing these problems. Jamie's not the only one that's thinking it either. Climate time bomb is ticking. The message was grim, with a glimmer of hope and a call to action. Our world needs climate action on all fronts, everything, everywhere, 
all at once. Scientists say time is running out to limit human-caused global warming to one and a half degrees above pre-industrial levels. This is the average global temperature change since 1900. This is what the future could look like, depending on how much greenhouse gas emissions are cut. Today's report outlines what it calls a survival guide for humanity. This report clearly emphasizes that we do have technology and know-how and tools to solve for the climate problems. It's kind of a, a bleak picture if you're in those living in those areas. I agree, but I don't think the answer is going backwards. The answer is embracing technology, new solutions, and doing something about it that's realistic. That's how we have to move forward. So you and I have already kind of talked about some of the companies that are pushing for these important changes to happen. But like we mentioned, there's a bunch of red tape that's holding them back. Did you know that Elon Musk's SpaceX decided to r- launch a rocket even after the FAA said not to do it? That's pretty ballsy. It know. is, right? <laughs> and the reason why Elon did it, he said, if I had to sit around and wait for the FAA to make a decision, we would not become a spacefaring race. So he just went and did it. And you're absolutely right. That takes some major kahunis to go against the FAA, possibly lose your license to do what you have to do to get things done. I think we're, there's a general problem not just in the US, but in, in most countries where the rules and regulations keep um, increasing every year. Uh, rules and regulations are immortal. They don't die. There's not a natural, occasionally you see some law with a sunset provision, but, but really otherwise the vast majority of rules and regulations uh, live forever. And so if more rules and regulations are applied every year and it just keeps growing and growing, eventually uh, it, it just it takes longer and longer and, and it's harder to do things um, and there's, there's not really um, an effective garbage collection system for removing rules and regulations. Um, and so the, gradually, the, the, this, this hardens the arteries of civilization um, where you're able to do less and less over time. Um, so I think government should be really trying hard to get rid of rules and regulations. Well, and in his defense, Elon, in, in addition to having balls, uh, <laughs> he also has the money. You know, he can take that risk. He can be a bad man. And some of these startup companies, you know, they obviously don't have that money to lose. Right. When you're scrimping penny to penny, you can't go against the FAA or any other regulatory agency and hope maybe they'll just overlook it. That's not going to happen. Right. So you're absolutely right. He's in a much better situation than most companies. Clearly, we have issues to address, and a lot of industry leaders are coming forward and saying, we've got to start addressing them now. So how do we do it? Well, we got to start looking forward again, because the thing is, I think if we don't start looking forward, we're going to be stuck in the same position for a while, and I don't know if we can really afford to do that much longer. So how do we support people who are thinking big, who are bringing these ideas to market? What's, what are some of the ways we can do that for all of us out there? So uh, first off is... It's this one's in my budget, so I like this one. Spreading the good word. Absolutely. So, be be the hype man for these companies that are trying to instigate good change. Mm-hmm. Just get out there, put the word out there, share it with your friends, share videos. Every one of these companies needs more people supporting them. They need to build community, and you can totally do that by just spreading the good word. And then the other way that's well, not always in my budget. <laughs> you can actually put your money where your mouth is. You can actually start investing in some of these small companies, and there's a couple of good ways to do it. Start Engine, remind me of the other one. Uh, Republic. Republic, there Absolutely. we go. Thank you. And it's never been easier with these different types of companies like Republic and Start Engine. In the old days, we've talked about this before, you had to be a accredited investor, you had to have a, a significant net worth to get involved. But today, a lot of these companies are on Republic and, and Start Engine. You can get on there and invest sometimes as little as $100 to get involved. And that is a great way to show your support and help these companies move forward. It's also fun to see how much public support they've garnered. Absolutely. Because that's that's people. Those Mm -hmm. are actual people. And you get to join a community. Now you're hanging out with people and discussing something you're interested in. It's fun. And it's a great way to support them. I'm just glad that there's companies trying this and that I can invest in like Aptera, Rumble, Eli. Trillium. Um, a, whole, a whole bunch, Boxable, a whole bunch of them are out there really working hard to bring these ideas to market. And we're going to be bringing them to you over the next several months, weeks, and years, um, and showing you some cool ideas. We've invested in a few of them. We're going to be meeting these people. So again, hit that like and subscribe button, follow our journey, and you too can help us 
learn more about these wonderful companies who are really trying to change the future, like Aptera. Check this out. Innovation is risk. It's hard to make the impossible possible. But that's what we do. Together, Aptera will change the way the world views mobility. Let's make a stand. A stand to focus on efficiency first. On solar power. Because one day, transportation will be free of gasoline, free of charging. A cordless vehicle to take you anywhere you need to go. Aptera is developing that future. We are that future. It's time to accelerate Aptera. I imagine that since some of these ideas are so drastically different than our normal, not only do these companies have to overcome the normal hurdles of you know, starting up a business, but they also have to encounter this idea of people being resistant just because those ideas are so different. People do not like change. <laughs> people do not like change. And one of the funniest videos I've seen in a long time is this video from the 80s. If you want to see resistance to change, check this out. Any attempt to restrict drinking and driving here is viewed by some as downright undemocratic. It's kind of getting common this when a fella can't put in a hard day's work, put in 11, 12 hours a day, and then get in your truck and at least drink one or two beers. They're making it laws where you can't drink when you want to. You, can't, you have to wear a seat belt when you're driving. And Pretty soon we're going to become this country. At some point they're going to reach a tipping point where the ideas don't seem so drastically revolutionarily weird or different that people will go against them so adamantly. I think the tipping point is, is occurring faster than it used to, and I'm a big follower of Aptera. I've invested in Aptera, John's invested in Aptera, and I am really surprised about how fast and how quickly that community developed and how inspired and you know just invigorated they are about this product. So I think a tipping point happened there, and really someone should go back and study, you know, what was it about Aptera? Is it because it's a car? Americans love affair with a car. Is it because of the unique shape? Is it because of the environmental factors? Something meshed well with a, a community, and people really flocked to it and came around it. So there's a person there, someone there, who knows how to get to that tipping point and making it happen. More companies need that support, and that's why we're here. And I'm looking forward to learning more about companies that are trying to change things up for the better and who are willing and capable of reaching that tipping point. Absolutely. And if you know any companies that are working hard to change the world, to bring environmentally friendly, sustainable technology to market, please let us know. And we would love to contact them and do a story on them or just learn more. Comment below. Comment below. And again, please hit that like and subscribe button. It would mean the absolute world to us. This is now our future and we could really use your support. I'm really looking forward to getting more into companies that are really looking to change up the game when it comes to infrastructure, transportation, and living. I am too, and I am looking forward to the leadership coming up and just listening, learning about new ideas and how they are going to, as you said, get their companies to that tipping point from it's new and weird to, hey, we need to do this right now to save the environment and hopefully have some fun. I'm looking forward to getting through to some leaders to kind of cut through that hypocrisy. They, they talk a lot about, we need change now, we need change now, but nothing gets done. I agree. And if we can be a help to any of these companies, facilitate that change. If our community that we hope to grow can facilitate that change, we would love to be part of it. Thanks for watching, and let's make it a world worth living in. God, I love Genesis. They are pretty good. Mm -hmm. Take care of the three, and be your very best self. We'll see you again soon. And everyone who lives here will have a responsibility to help keep this community an exciting, living blueprint of the future.